A barrel table like this can be a real conversation piece in a bar or in a game room or in the basement of your home. And it's really not too hard to make. First, you have to find a barrel. Now, you can find these at distilleries and wineries, maybe even at a landscape center. Next is gluing up a tabletop. This one's about an inch thick, 48 inches in diameter. I'm going to show you how I built this tabletop, cut it into this large circle, and then cut an opening in the middle that takes a circular piece of glass so you can see the top of the barrel. I'll show you how to cut all these circles, including how to cut a round piece of glass and how to fasten the tabletop to the barrel as well. Let's head to the shop and get started. To start, I had to figure out how I was going to secure the top. I decided on using a square frame that I had screwed to the barrel, but the sides of the barrel sloped, so the frame pieces needed to be beveled, so the top edges of the frame remained level. With all the angles involved in that, this seemed to be a good time to make a prototype to work out the ideas. So I bevel ripped and glued up some pine 1x4s with some corner blocks to test the idea. Let's see how close we came here. Okay, that's my intent is to have that sit more or less flush with the top so I'm a little big around the perimeter. I've got, missed the measurement by a little bit, but not much, about a quarter inch. So that's where the table will sit. So I think that shouldn't be any problem for knee clearance. Certainly won't be here. So I think this will work. I've got the, the angle right. I've got the bevel on these pieces right so they'll nest against the barrel and give me a flat surface here. I'll just adjust the length of these a little bit. And uh, then we can move on to making the framework for the table. I picked up my lumber for the barrel table. Here I've got uh, three 11 foot lengths of eight quarter, quarter sawn oak. And uh, going through here, I'm going to mark out how I'm going to cut these boards to get the, the boards that'll glue up for that tabletop. 48 inch diameter. So I went in and uh, did a quick sketch to uh, find out the lengths of all the pieces I need. Uh, I, they're going to be about six inches wide each. So dividing 48 by six gives me eight boards that I need to glue up to get my 48 inch width. Uh, and in the middle, one, two, three, four of these need to be pretty close to 48 inches long, at least 48 inches long, touch shorter on the two outside. But as I go to the outside, of course, they can get a little bit shorter. So this next to the outside piece can be about three and a half foot long, and the outermost piece, about two foot eight. So I wanna get that as a minimum length um, as I go through these boards and mark where my pieces are coming from. I'm gonna go through, mark out the longest ones first, and then piece in those shorter ones from what remains. So let's get started with that. So this first board looks pretty good. Uh, I've got a nice clear run all the way down to this bit of this knot here. I've got a knot here that continues around some checking here, and that continues around to the side. There's that checking on the side, and you can see it goes almost the full width of the board, so that's gonna be tough to include. So I've got that marked accordingly. Here's the second board. I've got a couple of knots right here. This one actually has a occlusion in it. It goes into the board a ways. Another one there, so I want to make sure I try to avoid those. The remainder of that board is very clear for the length of it, so I'm going to have some nice yield there. My third one, of course, this is uh, looking pretty good at this end. And you can see when I get down to that end, I'm going to have some issues. Down there I've got uh, a good bit of checking from where a branch was in the tree. So, let me walk through what I'm going to get out of each one of these boards now. I have checked both faces and these are the uh, worst of the faces, so I want to make sure I'm working around those flaws. So this first board does give me nice four feet of clear all the way down to here, so I've got a mark across there and uh, I've indicated I've got a four foot length here, so four foot. That's gonna be a uh, yield from there. So running from that mark, and I'm down to these flaws here. I've only got about two feet from my last mark, so I'm gonna have to work from the other end of the board. Measuring from that end, it is all clear up to the four foot mark, which is the maximum I need, so I've just got a line across there and we'll mark this one as being four foot long. 
So there's two of my four four-foot sections. So what that leaves me in the middle between those two four-foot marks is just over three feet. Now one of the lengths I need is three and a half feet. The other one is two foot eight. So I might be able to get two eight. But again, I need the full six inch width. So this is gonna cause me some problems. So I'm just gonna ignore this section for the moment. Over on this board, I've got a nice eight foot length of clear all the way down. So I've got two four foot lengths marked out on this one. So I've got two boards, each with two four foot sections. There are my four four foot sections. Remaining on this one, at this end, is a short length where I've got those two flaws. Now, I figure I can, as you can see there, do a little bit of uh, my radius there and eliminate those two flaws, especially after I get things jointed and planed to thickness. Those will be minimized. They can go on the bottom face. So I'm hoping that will give me one of my outside pieces of that two foot eight inch length. On my third board, this is the one that has the enormous cracks and checks down here. This really takes a big chunk of that out. I really can't use any of that uh, width up to you know, a certain point. So I've marked out my two three and a half foot lengths on this. So that gives me a three and a half foot length down there, a three and a half foot length here. And in between, just up almost to that occlusion, I've got uh, one of my other short lengths, my two foot eight inch length. So there is everything laid out. And I've got just that little bit of waste left over from these pieces. So I'm gonna start cutting these to length and then arranging them, uh, getting ready for glue. So here's my pieces cut to length, and now I'm going to organize them to get the best grain flow. Now, it's being all quarter sawn oak, it shouldn't be that difficult. Very consistent grain from piece to piece, but I will try to match, for example, bits of sap wood here that uh, are closer to darker hardwood. So we'll start seeing how these organize out. This, I wanted to be the bottom face. I marked it, if I make that the bottom face, I can possibly get rid of these two. So that's gonna be the inside edge. It's really nice flecking in this face here. I wanna to try to get that side up if I can. So with, with this rough arrangement, I've got about 56 inches of total width, which gives me plenty to play with to get rid of these occlusions I've got on either side. This one face up, and I've got the two that are face down over here, but I have plenty of room, uh, eight inches of extra width, at least at this point until I get it ripped to final width. Um, but even if I take a half inch off each board, and that'll get me right down to where I need to be. And I'm getting kind of close to my layout that I liked. I took them over to the jointer and gave them a quick run to get a little better look at some of the grain on here. Uh, I've decided this little light heart, uh, sap wood will end up in the middle where I can cut it out when I make the window for the barrel to give me an idea about how much of that I would lose. I made a just a rough template uh, that's about the diameter of the barrel, but putting that on top, I can see I get rid of a lot of that, uh, that sap wood there, so I'm not too concerned. I think that's a good choice. Put that in the middle and then cut it away later. So, and this may shift, of course, I mean, as the panel gets glued up, but either way, I'm still losing most of that sap wood. My last step in this process is not one that works out this well all the time, but you can see I've got the blue arrows drawn on each of those pieces. That indicates the grain direction, the direction I want to plane. Um, most often I will organize a panel so that it looks best and then try to consider grain direction as a secondary thing. In this case, it worked out that I could organize all the boards, uh, getting a nice consistent grain direction, the grain all runs the same direction on both boards, and still get a layout that I am satisfied with for the top face. I'll probably be doing some hand planing on this after the panel is glued up to uh, level out joints and uh, inconsistencies, 
So having all that grain running the same direction is going to be a big plus. Now at this point I'll be moving everything, taking it to the jointer, flipping it over, running it through a planer, moving all these boards around the shop. So let me show you how I keep things organized through that process so I can get back to this arrangement after everything's been milled. Now I have eight boards in this panel and to help me keep them organized throughout the milling process, I number each one on the end, one through eight. And you'll notice that I put the numbers just a little bit off to the side, actually centered. Uh, for example, this number one is off to the side and it's obvious if that board is flipped upside down or end for end or if it is flipped side to side. So I simply, after all my milling is done, I will simply rearrange these numbers in the same order so I can tell that all those boards are back in the original orientation that I worked so hard to come up with in the first place. And notice on my number eight, that's one of those numbers that could be seen the same upside or downside. So I've put a line underneath that. And again, by offsetting everything to one side, it's easy to tell if a board has been flipped face for face. So now I'm ready to head to the jointer and planer and start getting this stuff milled down to make it flat, make it the proper thickness. So here are the eight pieces I'm going to glue up into the tabletop and I've milled all four surfaces, both faces, both edges. So if I'd made any marks on there to help keep me oriented as to the order of these boards, those marks on any surfaces would have been gone. So now my marks on the end make it easy. They are still there, still very easily visible and I can arrange those boards correctly in the intended order. <music> Okay, I've got things dry fit again. My joints are looking pretty good and my last check that I want to make is that I've got these ends positioned correctly that I can actually get the 48 inch circle around that. So I've got a center point more or less marked here. I'm just going to spin this measure, this straight edge here at the 24 inch mark. It's four foot long. I'm going to check that I've got excess outside the ends at all times. I'll move up a little there. Got some down here. Okay. Looks like I've got uh, enough waste all the way around that I can get my 48 inch circle out of here. So I'm going to mark these in this position so as I glue them up, I can get them back into that uh, alignment. So as I did my dry fit, I realized this was going to be too much to handle in one big setup. There's just too many joints and things would start setting up before I get things aligned. So I've broken it down into several smaller uh, glue ups. I'm going to glue up these three and just keep adding as we go. Okay, we'll let that set up for about 10-15 uh, minutes and we'll just build on to this assembly. I've got the panel plane 
relatively flat, reasonably flat, so I can do my routing, cut out the circle here. Um, this is the back face that we're looking at. Uh, I'm using a Jasper jig here to uh, do the cutting of the circle. It's really nice because it's, uh, it's got all these holes pre-drilled for you in a diameter. So I'm over here, I'm at a 48 inch diameter. Uh, it provides you increments like, okay, 47, 47 and a quarter, 47 and a half, 47 and three quarters. So it's, it's a nice jig for, uh, uh, for doing this kind of work. It's got all kinds of possibilities. It goes up to, I think, 54, 53 inches or so in diameter. I'm using a, a quarter inch spiral bit to make this cut. But to lay out the circle, I, I used the jig, just like I said, put the pin in with my finger, held it kind of roughly, spun the jig around till I could find a location that gave me the maximum size circle and avoided as much of this ugly stuff as I wanted. For example, here, you can see the pencil line comes right around here, and this being the backside, all this will be cut away, so that'll uh, take care of that. That worked out very nicely. Uh, on the opposite side, I did the same thing, put some of the ugly wood up here in the corner where I knew it would be cut away as the router came by. So these are the worst looking faces of the board on the bottom intentionally for that purpose. And when I get it flipped over, uh, things should look pretty good. Before I begin routing, I need to set the depth of the router bit. I've got a piece of uh, pink extruded foam uh, underneath here to serve as a spoil board so I don't cut into the bench. To set the bit depth, just plunge this down until that bit touches the foam. That's that. It just barely cuts into the foam there. And then I've got my stop here. Lower that rod till it bumps on the stop. And that'll be my final cutting depth. I'm going to rotate this to a couple of higher increments. One, two. And that will be my first, probably one more, maybe. So that will be my first cut. That seems hefty. It will go all the way to the top. So that will be my first cut right there. So the first thing to do is to cut out the outside of the circle. You get a 48 inch diameter. Then I'll reset the jig and we'll cut out the interior, which will be, I think, about a 22 inch diameter. That'll be the window where the glass sits so we can see the barrel top. I was sanding the tabletop and I noticed that I have a little bit of a step here in the two cuts where I was plunging to different depths, cutting out the circle. So I want to trim this flush. I entertained the thought for about a second of sanding it, but I don't think that's going to give me a very good result. So I'll end up using a uh, pattern bit uh, to route that top portion flush with the bottom portion. I need a piece of glass to fit in that cutout at the tabletop, and I happen to have a piece of glass in my stash of stuff that I've kept for no particular reason other than I might need it someday. Um, and this is going to be actually the perfect size. It's quarter inch glass. Uh, it's a little over length, so I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to cut it down to a little more manageable size, and then I'm going to show you how to cut a circle out of a piece of glass. So first, if you've never cut glass before, a glass cutter is uh, obviously it's something you'll need. You can find these at the hardware store. They're very, very inexpensive. Uh, they're not sharp, you know, but uh, we'll cut glass. So the first thing you'll do is I want to I'm 30 inches wide here. I want to make this 30 inches long so it's a square as well. Grease pencil is useful for making a mark on a piece of glass. So right there, there's my 30 inch marks. And this is not going to be real precise, so I'm not too worried about getting my marks real close. Now when you're cutting glass, safety glasses obviously are a big part, but you simply want to draw the cutter along here one time with moderate pressure, and then that will score the glass, then we'll snap it right along that line. You don't draw the cutter back and forth numerous times. One single continuous draw. Let's 
score mark is right there. I'm going to bring that over to the edge of the bench and then with a quick snap we're going to cut this into two pieces. Here we go. Just like that. So the circle that I need is 22 and a quarter inches in diameter. I've written that on the corner of my glass just to remind myself. Um, so of course I need to set my glass cutter for the radius of that, which would be of course half that 11 and 1 of an inch. So I've got 11 and 1 eighth of an inch from the pivot point here under the suction cup to the cutting wheel. And I want to double check this before I start um, cutting the glass. So I'm just going to lock this in place and get a sharpie and make marks where the wheel contacts the glass. So that's where the swing it around to here, do the same thing. A little. Yeah, the wheel rides right on that mark. I'm going to take this off so I can measure. Going right through the middle. I'm going to burn an inch here. right on the money, 22 and one quarter inches. Now, this glass is contained within the table and wood expands and contracts. I'm building this table in winter when it's very dry out. So as the year goes on, summer comes along, it gets humid, the table is going to expand. That opening is going to get larger, not smaller. So I'm comfortable with a 22 and a quarter inch piece of glass going into that opening. If it was summer, I would give myself a little bit of error. I would make this circle just a, sm a bit smaller, maybe an eighth of an inch, so that as that table shrinks, it doesn't pinch the glass, possibly breaking it. So now I don't need these marks on here anymore, so I can get rid of those. You want to make sure also that the glass is very clean. You don't want any dirt or anything on here. I'm going to get the suction cup just a bit damp so it sticks well. On my crosshairs and there's that. Now I'm going to put a little 3-in-1 oil, any kind of lightweight oil, WD-40 like that, just where the cutter goes, just give it a little bit of lubrication, keeps that wheel cutting smoothly. It can make a bit of a mess, but it's worth it not to ruin your glass. Now I've got to go all the way through there. Okay, so now let's make a cut. We're going to start here toward one of the corners, swing it around, and we want to stop once we reach our starting point. We don't want to go past that starting point again. You'll hear a distinct click when it gets back to there. So here we go. Yeah, you heard that. Okay, so we're done with the cutter there. Take a little wipe some of this oil off. So the oil's cleaned off. At this point, I like to put on my gloves. There can be some sharp edges happening here. Um, sometimes glass breaks unpredictably, so you don't want to be caught off guard. Um, what we need to do now is bring this glass to the edge of the bench. I'll slide it toward me. So this hangs off. Okay, it's not easy to see on camera, but there's my score line right across there. What I'm going to do is pull this out just a little bit. I've got a soft mallet here and just ever so slight pressure for my thumb, about the weight of my hand hanging down here. And I'm going to tap below here. Very gentle taps. What I'm looking for is you'll see the cracks start to open up at some point. When you see that, you want to stop. Okay, there it went, right there. Now I'm going to just continue turning this, tapping and chasing that crack all the way around. Just the weight of my hand out here. 
very gentle cracks, very gentle taps. We're not trying to break the glass free yet. We're just trying to widen that cut. Almost back around to the starting point. Right there to right there is all I got to do. There. So I've connected those two. See, I've got break all the way around. Now I stopped and I repositioned this. I put it under the white towel because I think you can see the crack better uh, around on the camera. Um, I'm going to just encourage us a little bit more from the top. You hear that pop? Again, we're not trying to break this circle free. We're just trying to uh, make sure the, the uh, score is all the way through the glass. Tapping right along the cut mark. Applying a little bit of downward pressure here. The towel makes it easy to flex just a touch. Now to actually release the circle, we're going to go back to our glass cutter here. We're just going to make some score marks along around the perimeter here and start to break away the waste. So we'll start here. Start at your score mark, the circle. You don't want to cut into it. Okay, now just try to encourage this away. There's that one. A little bit of tension with my hand. There. There's one quarter free. We'll spin this. Come over to the next cut here. That's that one. And this just fell off like that. So there we go. One circular piece of glass. Now I will come back and I'm going to sand these edges to uh, get rid of some of the chips and to smooth out the uh, very sharp edges. This is a sanding block. This has got uh, 120 grit on it to start with. Let's go around here and sand the edges. A pair of gloves, good idea. I waited to route the rabbit here until I had the glass cut to size so I knew I'd have the right size rabbit to fit the glass. So I've measured the opening, measured the glass, and know that I need a 3 8 inch rabbit all the way around here. So I've set up my router with a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit, and let me show you how I set the depth. I've used a couple of pieces of glass that were scraps from cutting, and I'm over one of the dog holes in my bench so the bearing can drop down into that dog hole. And then I will see the cutters touch the bench, that's the height I need, and I'll lock that in place. I'm ready to build a framework that goes underneath the tabletop now and, uh, and attaches the tabletop to the barrel. This is the prototype that I've shown. Um, I'm going to orient it in this fashion. Uh, the reason being I've got two screw heads back here that I need clearance for. So I'm going to orient this at uh, 45 degrees to the printing on the barrel. The tabletop grain will run this direction. So expansion will be in this direction. 
I'll have corner blocks in each corner of the frame and they'll have slots in them that will allow the uh, tabletop to expand and contract. Uh, I think I can get all of this out of one piece of leftover scrap from the eight quarter stock from which I made the table. Uh, we'll resaw this, rip it, and get the four pieces I need for the frame. Now when I bevel these frame pieces, I've got the blade tilted at about 9 degrees, which matches the barrel. I want to position the blade so that it exits right along the top edge of the workpiece. So to do that, just put a metal rule along there, extend it out to the blade. And that's pretty darn good. That gets me on that side of the blade, gives me the most clearance between the blade and the fence leaving the most material, which is really what I'm after. So that's how I know where the blade will exit. We're ready to make our cuts. With all these frame pieces beveled, there's one more thing I need to do to each one before I'm ready for assembly. Um, if I try to screw them together now, obviously there's going to be a pretty significant gap there. So I need to cut a miter on the ends of all of these uh, so that they match up nicely. And I've taken a piece of scrap and uh, set that miter gauge so I know where my, where my angle is going to be. And uh, now I have that set, so I'm going to go back and miter two of the pieces that will be the inside frame pieces, miter both ends, and then screw up the frame. So here's my dry fit. Everything looks good. I've got just a nice little, well, I get called a spring fit around the barrel top, so there might be just a little bit of spring. But the whole idea is for the, these pieces to make contact with the barrel, I will screw into that to the barrel to secure that tabletop. There will be corner blocks that go in each corner, and that is where the tabletop will be fastened. Mm -hmm. 